Right then, finally we're back out. Didn't get out last week. Had a, a busy week with Van. Had to get all that fitted out last week, so my, my six days off last week. We're taking up every day, fitting Van out. So that is 99% done now. Had all the uh, diesel heater fitted and uh, all electrics wired up and the power units and everything put in yesterday. So it's uh, I've got a few finishing touches. Got a box of the uh, diesel heater in and power unit and battery. Carpet it. And it's literally there. Other than a couple of weeks ago, uh, a wagon driver on a roundabout, a certain busy roundabout for M1 over our way. Decided they were going to cut across two lanes and smash straight into the side of my van. So that needs a panel repairing in up 26. So I've got to wait for all that's done. It's not stopping me getting out in it and having a neat out in it, but it's uh, curtailed any sort of multi nighters or a certain weekend that me and Kerry were going to get out in it. Anyway, less of that, I'm back out doing what I love doing. Anybody that's familiar with area might recognise or might not recognise that's Mungrisdale just down there and we are off up over to Blencathra way now I've got a certain spot in mind whether I'll get to it I'm not entirely certain uh, Failing that, I might have a look just on top of Blencathra, at the top of Sharp Edge. Failing that, Bannerdale Crags, which is that lump there, just behind you. I know there's spots on there, because I've walked over that top of there a few times. So, yeah, that is where we're heading. So, I have walked up this way before. There is two ways. If I follow this one up this old mining valley, it takes you to Bow Scale, and then I've got to walk right across, but... You can go up this way, up uh, up the valley, fetches it out this side of uh, Bannerdale Crags, and we can get over. So I think I'm going to go that way, the uh, bit quicker route. So yeah, I'm going to shut up Gavin on, because it's already nearly four o'clock. Sunset is half past six now, so we have got plenty of time. Uh, but yeah, right, I'm sure. I'm gonna shut up. We'll get going up there. <laughs> oh, this is uh, ooh, proper boggy along here. Look at this lot. I'm back into uh, back in trail shoes and uh, mini gaiters on this outing. <laughs> I think I'm beginning to. Uh, Regret that decision. I'm glad I've put my uh, waterproof socks on. I've got my seal skin waterproof socks on. My summer ones. So it's not too. Uh, it's not too cold. It's pretty mild. I think it was about nine or ten degrees at Van. Uh, and minimum temperature tonight for Umbling Cafre is uh, only four degrees. So. But then again, tomorrow night it does drop back down to uh, minus two. So winter's not not uh, not done with us just yet. Still getting them uh, odd nights where you might get a bit of frost and that, but then my winds get back up tomorrow night or the following morning. But tonight, single digit figures for wind through to tomorrow morning as well. But from about 3 o'clock in the morning, we're due to get some heavy rain. It's going to last so to right into mid morning, so we'll see how that goes. Yeah, we'll carry on heading up this path. Snakes its way up valley, up to the top end, sort of between the cut off up, the cut takes you out in between Bannerdale Crags and Bow Scale, Bow Scale, which is over that way. And then we just got to cut back. We'll go over towards Blink after see if I can scope this spot out that I've been on about. If not, like I say, we're not short of options up here, so plenty to go with. 
<laughs> right, as I was saying. I'm sort of regretting not wearing boots. It is, it is what it is. I forgot, I've come up this way twice before and I forgot there were a little bit in a stream crossing just here. So, I'm just gonna have to go for it. I've got my waterproof socks on, like I said. But, uh, Safely across. Oh. <sighs> all part of it fun, innit? All part of it fun. Feet are all squalshy now. Oh, I'll tell you what. As you all know, I love my winters. Snow and them cold, icy, frosty camps that you can get but no, when we start getting into spring there comes a point when I'm sort of right, let's get winter out of the way let's get into spring and we just don't cusp of that now and it's nice to wait birds and see life, you know, like like on other weeks camp in some of the ponds and puddles and that along here there's frog spawn, all, all, all water's all full of frog spawn and that so you know like I say you can hear birds which is you know it's fantastic to see in here so yeah I'm sort of winter's done with now for me let's get into spring these lighter nights earlier mornings like I, I think I mentioned back down there sunset tonight, it's 25 to 7 I think uh, and it's it's 19th of March today, Tuesday, is it Tuesday? Ah, Tuesday and I think clocks go is it forward? For, spring forward, fall back uh, that's right isn't it, so yeah <laughs> we'll go forward next week or back in the March, whenever it is I think it's end of this month isn't it don't quote me on that but yeah, it's nice to sort of get into spring Milder temperatures, enjoying them longer nights. But you know, as, as well as that, it's not having to set off at crack of dawn in the morning to get parked up at half eleven and twelve o'clock because it's dark at half past three. I ain't set off up here while one o'clock today. Steady drive up, got parked up, steady walk up. I'll be up there in plenty of time, find a nice spot, kick back relax and enjoy it in winter it's a lot more so sort of, a lot more carefully planned with your timings and sort of having to rely on plan air camp spots and it, it, it is a lot more harder in winter but yeah you start getting into spring at summer becomes a little bit more relaxed and a bit easier so I right, we're gonna this starts rising up now nah, round here once we get a bit further round, we cut off up, up hillside. Now that, uh, this Beckett bottom starts rising up as well. So at some point, I need to get some water filtered. So I will get round the corner, before this starts rising up, and uh, we'll get some water. Right, then we've got, the spot I'm talking about so of course that's that's Blencathra so we're looking straight up uh, Sharp Edge here I don't know if you can see that sort of round grassy lump just in front of it that's what I've got my eye on uh, whether I can get to it I don't know we can't we can get to it of course but it's which way <laughs> The way I approach it from. It's just over it back there, that's uh, Scales Town. And uh, before maybe on the other side, not opposite side. Because there is a there is another path on opposite side of here. It takes you up and you go up the tourist route on opposite side if that's what you want to call it, on, up onto Blencathra. Uh, and I could have crossed outlet for to town which is just up there where I could have got my water and gone straight up onto that 
but we're on this side and you can see sort of what we've got you know what sort of lays in front of us terrain wise to actually get onto there so maybe in hindsight I should have crossed over the stream at bottom looked a little bit closer at map and I could have made it a lot easier for me said looking at it from this side here I don't know whether it's going to be viable for me to sort of get to the top end so like I say I still need to get some water here uh, and sort of traverse across to it we'll see I'll have a look once I've got my uh, water from up here I'll have a look at it and see what the uh, layout land looks like and whether we can actually get across to it so yeah I'll keep trapping along this path get to the point where it's sort of stream is at its highest point where I can get me watered and then we'll uh, like I said we'll have a look at it see if we can actually get onto it Right, I've uh, I've come to a bit of a decision the more and more I've looked at it, it makes more sense for me to cross over the river here over the stream climb up to this path on the opposite side walk up to it so to top end it out that way at time it's got scales times just in there get me water there filter my water and then I'll climb up on to the top of that I'll have a look if it's not suitable it then allows me to sort of I'm not going to walk sharp edge I don't, I don't know I don't know yet. I'll see but what, what I can do then is skirt round it looks looks like you might be able to sort of skirt round it this side and cut across and then we'll come round onto Bannerdale Crags or we'll make a decision when we get up here anyway so let's get down here get over this uh, over this stream this river see if I can get over it without getting wet it don't look that deep it's on a shell of it look on it so I'll get over here up onto that top path and uh, I'll fetch you back then I was like an old sheep well I say a sheep uh, pen, shearling I don't know what it is I'm like an old shepherd or something I didn't notice this up much when I was looking at it uh, interesting one right then I'm going to follow this stream, this cascade pass on it here you can see it from here so let's get up to the path Right then we've hit the path so stone staircase this is the first time I've come on here by the way stone staircase up here I'll get to the top let me water there and I've just noticed as well so if it's not suitable up there just about make it out opposite side here I can come back down and there's a path so this is all the long side of the hillside here straight to the top of Edit Valley there well, that is the route which I would have done to the top there, like I said I've done that twice or four up there so I don't know obviously there is a path up there but that's just plan B so plans change hopefully this one for the better right another stream crossing right then scales turn actually camped here before just on here many moons ago it's a beautiful place when wind's bad though it can come in here, wind can whip round, the ball and come out so you don't get uh, much protection from wind at all if it's bad comes in, whips round that's path off up sharp edge, just there done that a couple of times, like I say not in any particular need to do it today but that's where we're going to have a look at, just up on top of here I'm going to get some water first get some water just here, fill up some water it uh, pack off and then we'll have a look up there see whether it's suitable I think it will be let's get some water first alright then that's three litre uh, 
Oh, it's on that side. That's three litre of water filtered. If I can put there, I could always come back there for some anyway, but I've filtered it here just in case we get up there, it's not suitable and we have to move on. So let's get on off up the path up here, get up onto there. Look at that, absolutely perfect. I think we found this spot. Tent there. Looking at that. Perfect. A little bit breezy just here, but like I say, winds aren't due to uh, get that bad. <laughs> Saying that, just starts uh, Gus Whips yard. <laughs> Aye, we should be right anyway. Aye, it's about quarter past five. I've got an hour and 20 minutes until sunset. I think we're gonna, I think we'll picture you with that view. Beautiful. Right, we've pitched up, it is 10 to 6. And as I was saying, I don't know if you noticed earlier on, down there, when I was down there, I, f I followed a bloke and a, a woman up. Lass had got blue leggings on. They, they, they walked up here in front of me. In fact, I can hear voices now. I've seen them on the ridge here. Looks as though they were heading off up Sharp Edge. But I, I've not seen them ascend that top part. But I've been pitching tent. I'm thinking to myself, I hope to God they haven't fell off there. I've just heard voices, but I can't see them on the ridge anywhere. So I hope, I hope, I hope they're all right. Anyway. Let's get on to the matter in hand. The new shelter. Where is she? There she was. So that is the Durston XMID 1 Pro DCF. Full mesh in it. It's, it's single skin. And obviously the uh, the mesh is, is sewn into it. It's not a, it's not a removable in it. So you can't interchange the solid in as we're meshing as like you can on the standard version. I've still got the standard version, but I might keep it for you, even though Har John's uh, got his eye on it. I don't know if I mentioned in my previous video, a couple of videos, I was on about selling Voyager and uh, Trailstar with Inner. They've, they've now gone. They're moving on to pastures. No one, people that have bought them, they've already been out in them and loving using them. So. Yeah, this is the uh, replacement, 445 grams. <laughs> that is uh, some serious lightweight tent. Got it all guide out. I pitched it in garden. Came last, about a week ago. I pitched it in garden and got all guys and everything on it. But yeah, 445 grams. And I've also got a new sleeping bag and all. I've been treating me saying, why not? I don't do hotels, so I'm going to treat me saying, Anna. So I, I'll show you this in here. So this is my new bag as well. This is the uh, Mythic Ultra 180, 900 fill power, rated to, down to zero degrees. And it's got the, uh, it's the tilt technology in it. Thermo, oh, I forget what it's like. It's there, look. Tilt. Thermo ionic lining technology. That's what tilt stands for. Yeah, that is going to be my sort of three season setup, especially that sleeping bag. That, that sleeping bag doesn't even weigh 400 grams. So a tent and a sleeping bag for under 900 grams is it i'm no good with maths but yeah absolutely stoked to that absolutely brilliant so i i can hear i can hear voices up there now i hope they're all right i really hope they're all right up there if they're going up or coming down it anyway i'll keep my eye on them uh like i say what time did i say it was quite quite a past five well, i can't remember i'm gonna get my center bro on anyway and take this uh, scenery and that wind when I was saying oh this is the spot that's dropped right off I've, I've rechecked forecast uh, I don't know if I mentioned it earlier on it was it due to start raining heavier about three o'clock in the morning 
that's now come forward to nine o'clock, light rain, and then about midnight, heavy rain. But there's no wind with it, so we'll we'll see what it's like. That uh, it's not, uh, it's quite solid. This ground, it's not as over on boggy ground or all like that. So, and it, it is a little bit of a sort of raised platform. But so we should be right. We shouldn't be getting any bogginess. Right, time for a brew. Kick back, relax, take that view in, and hopefully, fingers crossed, they're all right up there. Right, well it's uh, ten past eight now. I've just been chilling out for a few hours. I've had a couple of brews. Got into me, got out of me tights and everything that I've walked up in me uh, base layer and that that I've walked up in and got my senses on. But it's uh, it's pretty mild tonight. It's uh, I'm just lady. I've, I've I've got me bad mythic uh, me alpine kite on light, like, but. I probably could take it off to be fair, I've got my senses on and it's uh, it's not cold at all, it's really mild I don't know if I mentioned earlier on, the minimum temperature tonight overnight was 4 degrees uh, there's no wind absolutely not a breath of wind but I, I've checked the forecast again and it, it's it's to remain like this all night even I guess we're only like 8-9 mile an hour which you know if they're predicting that then it's like literally no but there is, uh, I don't know if I said earlier on, the rain is due in at 9 o'clock from 9 o'clock but there's, there's even no sign of that yet so we'll see see if that materialises through neat. So yeah, I've had a couple of brews, been stood about, it's been quite busy up here to neat actually, there were two, two walkers come from the top of sort of Bannerdale Crags and I watched them walking around that valley, then there were another couple in fact, there's been maybe two or three couples uh, of people coming down off the main route down to Scales, down. I think it were a runner, somebody running across the top. So there's been quite a few folk up here to meet, which I was a bit surprised at, but it's been a nice day. So obviously people will be out on fells and that. So yeah, I like say, just been chilling out, catching up on a bit of socials on my phone. And I'm going to get some uh, tea, I don't go now. I'll get a, I think I've got a, Adventure Foods, Beef Casserole or something like that to, to have there, so looking forward to that when I get another drink and uh, I'll catch up with you a, a little bit later on. Oh, lovely. Belgian mint hot chocolate. Right, I think it's gone 10 o'clock now. Five past ten. Still no sign of that rain yet, so... Forecast is slightly off. I'm hoping that it's slightly off for tomorrow morning as well. Uh, I was saying earlier on there was supposed to be rain from nine o'clock. Originally it was like sort of three o'clock in the morning, sort of, sort of dinner time tomorrow. But when I rechecked forecast, it had come for it to nine o'clock. I said five past ten. There's no rain, so hopefully I've just been outside as well to take a leak and it's quite clear the skies are quite clear the moon is up above us at back here so yeah there's no, there's no rain arriving anytime soon let's put it that way so uh, uh, I've just made me send not chocolate as you've seen got me jacket off just laid on top of my bag with, with bag up with quite over me over my legs and I say it's uh, it's really mild to eat without being no wind as well it's just it's an absolutely beautiful night, so yeah, I'll be getting me hot chocolate, I'll be getting me a down, getting a good keep, so I shall speak to you in the morning. Oh, hi me, good morning. I think it's, uh, it's quarter past six, I'm not sure what uh, time sunrise was, but it's light outside. I've been up about half an hour, just nipped outside to take a leak. Got back in here and it's uh, it's nice and cosy in this bag. I was saying last night I've only slept with my essential layers on. But I've uh, put my down jacket on when I've got back in here because it's quite chilly out there and I ain't heard no rain at all during the night and it's only sort of started this last half an hour, 40 minutes that I've been up. So that forecast that we were out yesterday. <laughs> Totally off. It's, uh, I don't know if you can hear it. Like I say, it is raining now, but it's not heavy. It's not heavy at all. It's only light rain. 
good views out there, there's good visibility and that, so I, I'm going to get a brew on, get the kettle fired up, and I've got a, I've got a porridge pot for my breakfast this morning, Quaker caramel fudge, looking forward to getting into that, so yeah, kettle on, brew time. Let's have a look at this. Quaker caramel fudge porridge. That is rather nice. That's got some really nice uh, chunks of caramel in it, that. Nice chunks of fudge in it, caramel fudge. Mm. Lovely. Well, that rain's not really got any wish. It's just, it's literally just spitting. It's not the heavy rain that we're forecast at all. Whether it, whether it gets any worse this morning goes on, I don't know. But I've already heard a few folk come up here. Oh, they were boiling the cat loader. All of a sudden, I heard a, a deep woof, woof, the dog <laughs> alsatian or something. I don't know what it was. I didn't poke me a dart. I thought, I'm not poking me a dart, and that's going to be the head in front of me. So, once it had gone, it kept barking a few times, got further away. So, I only it tent to worm. Looked like there were a runner on his way up, and I, I couldn't see what type of dog it was. And a few minutes later, I've heard somebody else on the way up, so it's busy up here this morning. It's only, uh, it's only just gone quite to seven and all. But that's one of, like I was saying yesterday, Werner, the differences between winter and summer and that. And that's one of the things you have to be wary on during summer, lighter nights, lighter mornings. People are out later on fells on a night. And they're up in fells earlier in the morning, you know, excluding being camping like. Folk are coming off from day walks late on the night, because it's still light at nine, half nine. And then folk are out at crack of dawn, you know, running and walking early hours in the morning. So you do have to sort of be wary of where you're camped and get up early, get your business sorted and get off at hill a lot earlier. So... I suppose that is one at downfalls, you don't get much of a, a laying. You certainly get uh, less sleep time, I think, as you full well know, in, in, to, so, in winter, I get out like seven, eight hours kip. But I don't think I went to sleep all about what, 10 o'clock or something, half 10, maybe 11. Uh, like I say, I woke up at, I think it was about... 20 to 6, great, eight past 5, 20 to 6 or something like that. And when I've looked at my sleep time, I've only had just over 5 hours kip, 5 hours 14 minutes or something like that. So, yeah, you definitely get less sleep time. Right, I'm going to get this down my neck, get my brew, start packing up, tidy everything up, and uh, we'll get going. So, as you can see, this is pretty much what we've got out here this morning. So, it's uh, still a little bit of rainy air, but not a great deal. The time that I've come out here, top of striding edge, there's now I've got a cap of cloud on it. That's looking over to uh, Bow Scale, uh, not Bow Scale, Bannerdale Crags. That's where I was I wa going to go. Then that other end, over there with cloud on it, that, that is Bow Scale Fell. That's, uh, them two are both weighing rights. And that one right in distance over there, through Gap, that's High Pike, that. Camped on that one, and I was last on the uh, last June. And I passed over there to uh, Cumbria Way. 
I'm going to be doing that again this year, enjoy that one. And I think I'm going to do it over four days this time. And I'm going to do it north to south, I think. Get that to uh, Carlisle stretch out of way. But that, that last few mile going through Carlisle and that weren't the most inspiring. So it's not until you sort of get into the fields just beyond, I think it's cold back in it. Just over the other side of there, I think they call it Colbeck or something like that. Once you sort of get into there and start heading this way, that's where fun and views and to starts to begin, really. It's a bit of a anti-climax when you do it south to north, which is the proper way or intended way. When you're going into Carlisle and it's you know starts getting built up into housing estates and things like that, it's not it's not a very inspiring end. And especially because there's no official endpoint barring the Carlisle Visitor uh, Centre or whatever it is. So yeah, I think I'm going to do it up opposite way this time. So yeah, I'm going to be doing that again this year. Probably end of May, early June again, we'll see. So aye, the shelter. That's mid one at Pro not uh, exactly had a test as such because like we've had zero wind it's rained this morning but only light certainly weren't the heavy forecast heavy rain that were forecast but I do like the fact that uh, Dyneema don't search it uh, search Dyneema composite fabric or DCF doesn't soak water up so when it's rained on it it retains its nice taut pitch so it's uh, a naturally a waterproof fabric it's not seam sealed I don't like that it don't need to be it's all all, all to seams are taped anyway it's got to be taped because uh, I think uh, I think Dyneema it's cutting it's all it's all cut into panels or something like that and then obviously it's taped and glued I think that's how they put them together. But there's no there's no seam sealing required on them or all like that. But yeah, I'm pretty uh, pretty impressed with it on its first outing. Looks the part as well, it looks the business, doesn't it? Right then, that cloud base is lowering by the minute. So I'm gonna finish this brew up. I'll finish my brew off, should I say? Start getting packed up, get decamped, and we'll get off back down into Mungersdale. Right then, we're all packed up, bag on back. That's where I was, you know the score, leave no trace. Cracking little spot that, that's been an absolutely beautiful little spot. I've had my eye on this for a lot of years. I saw somebody camp on here. Must be six, seven years ago. I also thought to myself, I'm gonna try and get to that spot. Now I've done it. Cracking view a sharp edge. Not so much at minute, but yeah, that's been a, a cracking camp that. Really enjoyed that one. Lovely, lovely, peaceful, calm night. A little bit of rain this morning. Still a little bit of, still spitting a little bit, but it's not too bad. Right, I'm not gonna go down Back the way I've come, uh, I've just been looking at map and I don't know if you'll make it out, but I'm just going to drop drop off the hillside down here, there's a path here, I'm hoping it drops sort of down the hillside, but there's a path traverses hillside here, this valley, to head of, head of the valley that I was walking up initially. I'm going to walk across top of Bannerdale Crags, over to the other side, there's another valley over there, that's I think it's a, a bit of a mining valley, I think there's some mine workings down there. And then I'm going to traverse down that hillside, down that valley, back down into Mungersdale. Make it a bit of a circular, so that's why I like to try and do that, instead of just going up and coming straight back down the same routes. Where I can, I like to make it a bit of a circular, so yeah. We'll drop down here somewhere, there's a, there's a bit of a path here, right corner, hope it drops down somewhere. We'll pick that path up there, so let's get going. I've just followed this path round, just round this corner just here, and it, it curls round. 
that corner and that's what you the old cracking uh, view of this side of striding edge just there and it looks like there's a bit of a gully just there and all that would be interesting now that path heads off up into this into this bit of a ball here looks like it goes down there and curls around drops down so there's a bit of a looks like there's a bit of a spring there that's full of water that's on that to sort of go down the top end of this just here onto this ridge line here and I'll walk down that I'm not going down there to cross over all that wet in bottom and climb back up I'll stay on high ground yeah that looks mighty uh, mighty impressive does that look at that yeah just look at that just uh, just as I come right top end there there is, there is a, a spring there <laughs> And there's also a dead sheep, it's been dead a long time, it's on the zonny bones there. Literally at side of weight, spring is coming out at floor, so yeah. Yeah, that too. Uh, I don't know if you can make it out just there. It's right in the bottom, there's a bit of a gully up there. And it looks as though it gets climbed, that. Yeah, so far up, about halfway up, and there's a, a chimney off to the right hand side, and then there's a route that carries on straight up. If anybody knows this this side of Blen Catherine or Sharp Edge better, or anybody knows about that, you'll have to let me know whether that's actually doable. It does actually look as though it gets climbed that from uh, where I'm stood looking at it. But I just I just love coming in, especially now that I've I've mentioned before, and now that I've done Wayne Wrights, completed them all. I've done umpteen on them several times over. You know, I've been up some of them half a dozen times, a lot of them. But every time I come, like I said, I've said it before, every time I come to the lakes, I want to try and camp on a way and right. I've not camped on and explore some new routes, new paths, new valleys. Obviously, like I said, I've been up this valley a couple of times before, but I've never come round, and I've never come up that stone staircase to town there, so that was a, a new bit of route yesterday to get to where we were. And then coming round this side and, and seeing this side of Sharp Edge. You know, like unless you come exploring, you don't get to see this stuff. I mean, you know, like I said, look how impressive that looks. But it's all about for me getting out and exploring. Not uh, so much new areas, but areas that you know, but different size to them. Like I said, I've never, apart from looking up this way, front path, I've never been in this actual area here so yeah um, I'm glad I've come right corner and seen that very impressive so I'll carry on walking just down here and that path's only about 100 yards or so below me you can see it just there we'll make his way to the uh, Edit Valley there up onto Bannerdale Crags that opposite valley Ah, uh, then we've just reached the top. That's where we've come from, right up there. Let's go to the right path to the top here. There's several paths off in different directions here, but that's the valley we walked up yesterday, and that's where I would have come up. I said I've been up here a couple of times. First time I co uh, came up here, we uh, I was camping with a few mates, and we, uh, we we were camping. We camped on Bannerdale Crags and Mungrisdale Common. Wainwright is over that way, so we ditched his packs just in this little bit of a gully here, hid them, went over here, we, could, we couldn't see a thing, we, we told trying to find something because it's just like Mungersdale Common uh, Wainwright, it's just it's just like a flat grassy plateau with a cairn in the middle on it, <laughs> we, could, we could barely see a thing, it was that misty, but we, we found it, come back, picked his packs up and headed over to uh, Bannerdale Crag, so there's a left path that takes you summit so to bears out to it right and then comes back there's a, there's a path straight on there's a path to summit so we'll, uh, I'll take you over that way we'll go to summit to Bannerdale Crags and I'll show you that because that is a nice view from the uh, top of the Adart Valley as well well I'm yomping my way up here and I just turn round and wowzers look at that Mist just cleared on sharp edge just there, Blencafra. 
Look at that. What a scene that is. Absolutely amazing that, isn't it? And I'll pitch just at base on it there. Fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Look at that. I love to see mountains like that. Don't get me wrong, I love to see blue skies and sun and everything. But do you know when it's like this? And you get views like that. Bit of cloud, lapping round edges of mountains like that. That's what mountains should look like. In my opinion anyway. Love to see that. Look at that. Amazing. Right then, this is the summit of Bannerdale Crags, 683 metres. And that cloud's coming again now. You can barely make uh, sharp edge out now and again. But yeah, this is, uh, I was going to say, you get some cracking views from here. But as I say, that cloud's coming again. And yeah, it's uh, some years ago now, a couple, a couple of mates we came up here, we uh, we camped on here. I forget what time of year it was, but we woke up to a really hard frost. As you can see, there's uh, plenty of flat ground just here. It's unavoidable camping near the path if you're going to come on here, but as you can see, there's plenty of flat ground just here. You get easily to three maybe four tents on here there's plenty of ground over there it's a little bit tussicky but aye Bannerdale Crags so we'll carry on a long path now that uh, goes back round to the top head, uh, head to the top of the head of this valley if that sounds right to head of this other valley we'll say that and we'll uh, make his way down there then on opposite side path traverses the valley straight down here we might be able to just see it just down in here down to edit valley um, in fact i can just about met path out there you'll not see it but all the way back down there then let's get gone now i'm just coming right corner and fo following it path round here carries on along here that path drops down opposite to uh, side of the hillside there i don't know if you can make it out but yeah i'm just coming round corner here and clouds dissipated a bit and just saw this little spot here look at this Ooh. look at that for a, a view couple of gullies here there's one on the opposite side just there there's one in here Look at that. This would be a right little pog for a tent, wouldn't it? It'd have to be a small one. I want to got to uh, want to got X mid on there. What a spot that would be with that view. Right then we've hit the path that traverses off the outside of this hillside, this valley now. Nice steady gentle path down, curls round joins back on the pathway we walked up the other side there is a this is a bit of a tongue they actually call it the tongue there is a path across top of here it's like a bit of a dog leg out and it's called the tongue you can walk off the edge of there but when you look at it from that side it is a bit of a steep craggy drop off the other side but there must be a route off it so but i'm gonna not going down that way this morning it's a little bit too wet and it's a little bit uh, slippery on rock so I'm going to head down this path, nice and steady away, drop down into this valley. Yeah, nice and steady away. Well, it's opening out lovely now. See all across there, over, back over to Bannerdale Crags, just over there. Beautiful. I noticed on map as well, I think, I think this is, obviously that's Bannerdale Crags, like I said. I think this is known as, uh, whether it's known as Bannerdale Valley, but... On map it says Bannerdale, and I noticed on map as well, just over here, it shows that there's some old, I was saying it's an old, like a mining valley, you know, some old mine works, and just over there, that's where, it shows where the uh, lead mining works were, and there's some caves as well, and you can just about sort of make out some entrances, some caves, 
and obviously it's shale where they've obviously tunnelled in and whatnot. And then just down here, there's one one down there that's looked like looks like there's a old utter or something like that. And then there's some down here. Obviously you can see all old track that comes in all the way up. Right up here. Yeah, it's uh, certainly interesting. And I know like if you go right over to High Pike, when I camped on there, I walked off down the opposite side of that valley, I forget which uh, what it's called that but on well on both sides of High Pike the valley's both up to them, up to the one up to Lingy up. That's a old light uh, mining valley. I think that uh, when we did Cumbria away, I think I, I don't know if I mentioned the uh, old about it, but yeah, that's a, a mining valley. I think the mine fought were it graphite or something like that. And uh, like I said, on the other side, when I camped on High Pike, like I said, I walked off that other side of the valley, and and that's a major old major mining valley as well. Uh, obviously lead and copper or whatever, I, I don't know, I can't remember. But yes, uh, certainly over this side at Lakes, the more northern end, there's a lot of old mine works, a lot of old mining gone on back a few hundred years ago. It's got a lot of history to it, hasn't it? A lot of history. Right, we're literally, or nearly, back down to uh, the point where these two paths meet, or split, whichever way you want to look at it. So, just down here, that's the bottom route we took in there. I don't know if you can make it out, that's the route we took up all the way around here yesterday. So we've only got down here. Ten minutes I'll be back down into uh, Mungersdale way at Vance Park. So I'm going to wrap it up here for this one, so as always, I hope you've enjoyed watching, I've really enjoyed that one, especially after not getting out last week, it's been a cracking camp that like I've mentioned already, spot I've wanted to get to for quite a number of years that, so yeah, enjoyed it, hope you have, so while well, we've got that view as always, thanks for watching, stay safe out there. And I'll catch you on next one.